Isaiah chapter 9, verse 8. We we'll continue about this, this invasion. We've been looking at the first and second advents. And Israel and Judah are done wrong. God has sent men like Isaiah to repent, get right. But they won't listen. The Lord sent a word unto Jacob and has lightened upon, the, uh, upon Israel. Before God has any consequences of evil and judgment, God warns. God warned Adam about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God has set forth, now we're not under the law, but God has set forth laws, five books of the Bible. This is what disproves. If there's anything that what the law should teach us is what disproves of God. What does God hate? And he's given us 66 books on what God hates and what God approves and what to do. And we're to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word. We're to rightly divide. Now, we're not under the law. And yet, out of Ten Commandments, Paul rehearses to the church nine of them. And the one he does not rehearse to us is the Sabbath. And he even goes far explaining about coveting and lusting. And the Lord sent the word into Jacob, and he has lightened upon Israel, the ten northern tribes. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim, northern tribes, and the inhabitants of Samaria, that's the capital of Israel, that say in the pride, pride is a sin. I don't care what you. Pride is a sin, no matter how much you want to lighten it up. I'm just trying to do something here. I have a definition I want to. And stoutness, which is robust, strong, firm, of heart. Now, it also has the word lusty. And lusty means stout, vigorous, robust, healthy, able of the body. And it's not to think, you know, sexual pleasures or anything like that. But it's to rank in there with robust. It's firm. Israel has a firm heart. Israel has a strong heart. In pride. And that does you no good. And America is in pride. The bricks are falling down. It's a stated a fact. The bricks are falling down. But we will build with hewn stones. We'll get rid of the bricks. They're falling down. We'll get marble. We'll get granite. We'll get bolt. We'll get. We can do better. Well, the bricks have fallen down because God has judged you. And we're living in the midst of, of this COVID-19 and, and it's it's killing people and putting people in hospital and keeping them home. And we'll come up with a vaccine. And praise the, the companies that come up with the vaccine and the leaders that support the vaccine. Praise to them. That's not what God wants. God wants you on your knees and repenting of your sins. I believe COVID-19 is a judgment warning of God. And even the Christians, I don't care about the world, not teaching the world. The Christians are looking to man and companies and, and the outcome will be great. That's not what God wants you to do. 
Not when you're in the lad to see in church age and you study Revelation chapter 3 about our church age. We're rich, we're wonderful, we're great, we're wah! You're poor, you're miserable, you're rotten, you're naked, I'm standing outside your door. Why are you so happy? The pleasures of, of, of sin for a season. So we'll get better stones. The sycamores are cut down. Destruction. But we will change them into cedar. We'll get better and, and, and smelling good trees. And they're not asking yourself, well, who is causing the destruction? What causes the destruction? What if this, this, the sycamores are cut down? What if it's because maybe termites? Maybe it's an, another bug infestation in the... Why? But we'll just do better. We'll do greater. We'll do better. That's the attitude of Israel. North and Judah and the nations of the world. We'll, we'll lick this. We'll take care of it. Not if, it's, not if it's not the will of God. Therefore, the Lord. All right. You're relying on your self-reliance and your pride. Therefore, the Lord shall set up the adversaries of resin. We read that in chapter 9 and chapter 8. Against him, Israel, and join his enemies together. All right, you don't want to repent. You don't want to get right. You don't want to seek me. I'll just, okay, I tore the bricks down. You're going to do better. I cut the trees down. God saying, you're going to do better. All right, I'll call your enemy and I'll get your, I'll get your enemy with your enemies. Now what are you going to do? Listen, 2021 it's going to be no better than 2020 because people are not repenting and adhering to God, including the Christians and the said churches of religion. If you want a revival in 2021 after the hardships of 2020, you got to get down on your knees. You got to get the junk out. You got to get the world out. You got to get the King James Bible. You got to seek God. You got to repent to God. You got to plead to God. That ain't going to happen. Not in the lad to see in church age. I, I see on Facebook, we got this revival, we got this camp me, we got this thing, we got this thing, we got, and all these smiling faces of doctors and PhDs and doctors such and such, this great preacher, this, that great preacher, that, and I don't see any God. I don't see no Jesus Christ. I saw a prayer card of a, of a visiting evangelist come in, and he did his tricks and his shows and all that, and I picked up his card. I didn't see anything about Jesus Christ. Well, I would show you something that what they did to Jesus Christ, I didn't bring that one. So you brought everything that's worldly and divine and great about you. And to show us what they did against Jesus, oh, you didn't bring that one. God said, I'll bring in the enemy. And the enemy of the church is the devil. And Paul warns the Corinthians, hey, you know, the devil has ministers. And the devil's ministry has been on TV and been in churches just off this everywhere. A couple of weeks ago, a month last month, I was in the hospital. I'm flipping through those chairs. The devil's on the te television. God holding a Bible, quoting scriptures. With all the faith healers out there, why ain't COVID-19 being healed? Where was the faith healer visiting room to room? Just my floor. And I don't know, I don't know how many patients were on my floor, but I, I mean, <coughs> where were they? I know a man that believes in faith healing and all that right within 20 miles where I live down south. Where are you, buddy? Where's your faith? 
Where's your healing? Nonsense. So he said, I'll bring your I'll bring your enemy. Look, join his enemies together against God's people. Why? Because God's people, Israel and Judah, when we get to Jeremiah, they're not listening to God. And will you get off about the lie of the seeing church age and the church age? No, because Isaiah and Jeremiah shows us what's in the church age today. Not with all the nonsense running around and all the nonsense is going on in Isaiah and Jeremiah's time. You think we're having fun in Isaiah? Wait till we get to Jeremiah, Lord willing. Therefore, the Lord, the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's Jehovah, shall set up the adversaries of resin against him and joined his enemies together the syrians before that's an enemy the philistines behind that's an enemy and they shall devour israel with an open mouth you think about wild animals they got their prey and their mouths are just opening devouring that prey Think about a serpent, a snake. When he's got a, he's got that mouth wide open, swallowing his prey. It's, it's the devil, Jason. And it's God saying to Satan, "All right, go ahead, but don't do this. Go ahead, but don't do that. Uh, that's your limitation." Job one and two. Well, why are there so many religions? Why is there so much, you know, false prophet? Why is there so much false teaching? Because that's what the people want, and God will give you what you want. Well, the story of how we got the King James Bible, and how in the Laodicean Church, how freely we can get the King James Bible, and how freely it's not read. It's not carried. It's not opened. And I'm talking about Bible-believing Christians. He said, what's that have to do with Isaiah? God is speaking to him. The Lord sent a word unto Jacob, and he has light upon Israel. They're not listening. You know that light upon Israel? What do we read about verses 2? Jesus Christ came to be the light of the Israelites. He came unto his own. He spoke the word of God. He spoke the word of the Father faithfully, and his own received them not. And when you read about the lad to see in church, eh, Jesus is standing outside the church knocking. Rejection of Jesus, like Israel rejected Jesus the Messiah. He wouldn't be standing outside the door meeting if you received him and believed on him and trusted him and he's welcome. Behind, and they shall devour Israel with an open mouth. For all this his anger, God's anger, it is not turned away, but his hand stretched out still. Because they're still not listening. For the people turneth not, they don't repent, they don't get right. They don't, the, the, for the people turneth not unto him, God. The bricks are falling down, go to the boulders. The trees have been cut down, go to the cedars. Go to the pharmaceutical companies and get a vaccine. Get your famous world leader. How about God? That's now for the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them. Who's smiting Israel? God. Who's not turning to God? The people. That'd be like a child. 
Dad catches him in the kitchen. He steals a cookie. And heard mom say, don't you touch those cookies. That kid goes in and steals a cookie. Dad whaps him across the behind. That kid gets up, puts his pants on, goes in the, cookie, goes in the kitchen, and grabs another cookie. Neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. All are welcome. That's not God. I'm sorry. God is not in your BBS. Matter of fact, most of your BBS has been canceled. Your church service has been canceled. Churches have closed. Well, we have our we have the live stream. You really think your people are watching the live stream? Do you actually think they're sitting in their house and they're paying the full 30, 45 minutes for the full time without flipping channels? Maybe they got you up in the right hand corner and they're playing a the game in the left hand corner. How about they got you up in the left hand corner and they got the pornography right there in the main screen? You know, they got television sets they can do that. I see they got four or five different channels. I, I seen that advertise. Maybe they got you up in the corner and they got the football game big screen. My grandpa used to do that. My grandpa used to watch baseball. He'd be watching baseball uh, on the screen and he'd be listening to a baseball game in his ear. I don't know how he could he'd do it. And I read something with a survey with, with this, this live stream on that. They're not listening to their home church. They're listening to somebody else. Oh, we do live stream. We're faithful and the people are faithful. No, they're listening to Joe Osteen. They're listening to Benny Hinn. They're listening to the 500 Club. Oh, we got 450... Somebody comes on to your to your thing and they just watch it for one second. I, I have people come on. I see they come and I see them leave right away. You had six visitors. No, yeah, six visitors, but they didn't stay and watch. I can monitor that. They're not calling upon the Lord. That's the church age too. Therefore, therefore, the Lord will cut off from Israel. Head and tail, branch and rush in one day. They don't listen to God, God's going to make it get harder. They don't listen to God, then God's going to make it harder. They get to the point where God says, that's enough. You don't want to repent, you don't want to seek me, whammo. Ask Belshazzar. He realized when Daniel told him the handwriting on the wall, he realized if, if Belshazzar would have repented. What if what if he told Daniel and the people, hey, all that stuff, that God stuff, clean that stuff up right now. Clean it. I'm getting on my knees. Daniel, you tell me how to pray. You tell me how to seek your God. What do you think would have happened? Nebuchadnezzar got right. Nebuchadnezzar, his grandfather, got right and, and declared God is the God of all gods. And you never hear about Nebuchadnezzar again in, in your Bible. I believe Nebuchadnezzar is going to be in heaven. But Belsizer didn't take God serious. Israel's not taking God serious. The church is not taking God serious. The ancient, that's the old period. <laughs> what a way to describe an old elder. We say elderly. God says the ancient and the honorable. They got honor. We got honor today, people. Television, radio, movies, sports, honorable preachers, honorable preacherettes. Honor. They're the head. They're the top. And the prophet that teaches lies, he's the tail. You know what the tail's next to? The butt. You know what comes out of the butt? The dung. The crap. And God says, that part of that animal, that part of that body, that's you that teaches lies. 
Hey, listen, Derek, uh, I'm a doctor of theology. I've been taught. What have you been taught? There are preacher stories. And I've been in many Baptist churches, and the preacher gets up and telling the story. Oh, okay. Wow. And I go to another church, and the same another preacher tells the same story, but it happened to him. Okay. Deja vu. I go to a third church, and that preacher has the same story, but it's him. <laughs> Getting a little beyond deja vu. And then they get up and they teach lies that have been, they have been taught lies by their pastors, by their educators. Somebody has taught them wrong in the scriptures. And I had one guy, well, that's what men taught me. How about what God said? How about Jonah never died and went to hell? What did Jonah say? Read what he said. I believe it's chapter 3 or 2, 2 or 3. And then Jesus said, as Jonah will be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. How was the Son of Man in the heart of the earth? He was dead and he went to hell. And they'll say, well, Jonah was a fairy tale. Jonah was a story. Jonah didn't die. Jonah didn't go. You're lying. You're a tale. You're right next to the to the dung, the crap, Ola. Watch this one, verse 16. For the leaders of this people, Israel and Judah, but Israel, caused them to err. We got a very prideful man right now. It's, it's in the presidency, I think, to, to the 20th of January. I don't know what's going on today. That man is very prideful. That man is very wicked. He's not saved, though Christians want to make him saved. And yeah, he called upon Jesus and, and the boss upstairs. That don't make you saved. And he's caused the people to err. He has not turned the people to God. You realize the Pope? And the President of the United States has the audience of all the newscasters in the world. Both on the television, on the radio, and the newsprint. And they have not given one second of credit to God the Father and God the Son. Not the another Jesus. Not the another gospel. Not the another. They have not given God the credit, Jesus the credit, or the Bible any credit. Well, Donald Trump, hold up. That's to get you idiots to vote for him. Come on, wake up. What do you get? I don't vote at all. I preach the gospel. I don't vote. So don't say, well, I'm affiliated with Biden. I don't, I'm not even saying his name right. The leaders of the people cause them to err. Adolf Hitler caused the nation of Germany to err. The errors of, of the of the leaders of the czars of Russia turned the people away from God. They that are led of them are destroyed. Israel, Samaria will be destroyed. And they will never get back right until during the tribulation period. Therefore, therefore again, the Lord shall have no joy in their young men. The strength of the nation. Look at our muscles. Look how we are. We're army. We're navy. We're great. We're athletes, God says. Shut up. Look at all the people who are coming out of the seminary. Yeah, with perverted Bibles. And they're going to get out there in pulpits and pervert my words and pervert my people. They're not going to feed the sheep. I don't want to shut up. This, I don't even want to hear it. You know, with all these, these colleges and all these students coming out of these Bible colleges, where is the revival? We're rich. We're great. We're wonderful. Hoorah, hoorah, hoorah. I said, I, I don't care about them no more. Neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and their widows in the law, God said. And God's like, you know what? 
Even they are crooked. Even they are perverse. Everybody, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For everyone is an hypocrite. <laughs> oh, I like that one. That's the lie to see in age of Israel, Samaria, and Isaiah chapter 9. What do you guys say about your people, God? They're all hypocrites. Have you read Revelation chapter 3, what God says about today's church age? Have you read it? And an evildoer. Look, and one in the bed. He's counting the whole nation as one. He says to the lad the same church, hey, I wish you'd buy some ice law because you're sick. And every mouth speaketh folly, foolishness. He gets a Tony. He gets uh, the Heisman Trophy. He's he put a ball in a hoop. <laughs> oh, eyes closed. Uh, I see that hand that I told you to raise. Okay, somebody keeps their eyes open. I've been in church and uh, uh, all eyes closed, and I see that hand. I'm looking. I'm in the back of the church. I'm like, I don't see no hand. I've seen it. I've been I've been I've been warned by my school about that hypocrisy, and I, I look around. Yep, caught you doing that. For all this, God's anger, His anger, is not turned away. You think God would have mercy and grace, right? God's loving God. God is love. Twenty twenty one. Maybe it's not 2021, 2022, or 2023. I know there's a time coming up for Israel called Jacob's Trouble. Files, trumpets, seals, and three woes. And the devil himself as a world leader. And God said, let him have it. Let him have it. And then when the seven years is up, according to God's word, God, they're killing, they're beheading your people in the church. Uh, let them. They rejected me. They rejected the word. They rejected Jesus. They rejected the Messiah. They wouldn't listen to the Gentile. Let them. If God turned off the lights and turned his back upon Jesus when he became sin on that cross, you want a bright eye and bushy tail and lollipops and smiley balloons when you sin? When the church is painting smiley faces as Jezebel painted her face in the churches and we have a rebuke in the churches about Jezebel being there and you got children with their face painting and the Bible says, and Jezebel painted her face and you put that to face paint in the churches. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. God's got to bless it because it's, Christian. No. Oh, oh, oh. You know what God's anger will be for the Christian? At the judgment seat of Christ when you get wood, hay, or stubble. But, but don't I get a crown? You didn't earn a crown. But well, I lived on the planet Earth. You know, I just played on the team and I got and that don't happen in heaven. You don't deserve a crown. You ain't gonna have a crown. You don't deserve an inher inheritance. You ain't getting an inheritance. You're not going to help here. Well done. That's the anger of God for the Christians. Well, my pre, I don't. You got your own Bible, don't you? Five thousand apps on your phone. And you ain't got one for the King James Bible. Shame on you. I ain't gonna let up on you. I've got 5,000 people there. Yeah, you know why they watch you? Because you're going to fluffy, healthy kind of peanut buttery sandwich message. You know what my message is? It's vinegar and salt. <laughs> I'm offended. 
is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness, burn is as a fire. Oh, what could it, hell? I mean, that's not hell, but look, look, at the, look at the relationship. Hell and sin and fire. It's hard to stop a fire. It shall devour the briars and thorns, the curse of the world. Thorns and briars became because Adam didn't listen to the word of God. And shall kindle in the thickets. That's a good stuff I got written down. Thickets. The thorns and the briars are waste. I have a note here. I don't know where it came from. It says thickets are good stuff of the forest. And they shall mount up like a lifting up of smoke. A pillar of smoke. God was a pillar of smoke to the nation of Israel. And we read about early God would be a pillar of smoke in the millennium. We read about that, remember? And it guided the Israelites during the day. Not right now, not in the anger of God. This anger of God in the pillar of smoke, I can't see. <laughs> I can't breathe. You know, there are people in, in, in China and in California today, they got to wear, because of smog and air pollution, they got to wear masks. You know, one third of the trees are going to burn up in the tribulation period. I'm going to wear a mask for COVID. You might have to wear a mask for the forest fires. Maybe God's getting you used to mask wearing. Some Christians wearing a mask, that's the best face they had in church in all their life. Whoa, that was a big one. Through the wrath of the Lord, that ain't. That is not the modernistic God. That is not some of the Laodicean church God. The wrath of the Lord, not my loving God. The wrath of the Lord of hosts is in the land darkened. Look at verse 2. The people that walketh in darkness have seen a great light. That's Jesus Christ. In the time that Isaiah and Jeremiah is coming up, the land's going to be darkened because there is no word. There is no seeking God. And that's what it's going to be like in the tribulation period. At the end of the seven years of the tribulation period, there is no artificial light and there is no natural light. Except for the light that Jesus Christ is coming. Darkness. Read, read John chapter 3. And men love darkness because they're de these are wicked and all that. John chapter 3. I got a great message out of that called cockroaches. And the people shall be as a fuel of fire. Now go run to verse 5. Every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. We read about that. And garments rolled in blood. But this shall be a burning and a fuel of fire. Here the people shall be the fuel of the fire. Friend, that was World War II. That was the, the gas chambers. That was the incinerators. Where Jews were put into these buildings and they were burned alive. Don't tell me the Bible is incorrect. Men wrote the Bible. No man shall spare his brother. There's a picture that circulates on, on Facebook and around. And it's, it's one of the concentration camps of the Nazi parties. And it, it is, it's a stone wall. And, and there are marks on this wall. From the Jewish people scrapping their nails again. I mean, they didn't have, they took all the rings and all jewelry off. The Jews were putting in these things bare, naked, women and children. And the scribbles on this wall are the fingernails of the Jews trying to crawl out.
He shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry. That ain't God speaking. He should, I'm going to steal. And you're still going to be hungry. He shall eat on the left hand and they shall not be satisfied. Not enough food. Food comes from God. One of the things I preach sometimes at the farmer's market where I preach, on the street, you don't even thank God for blessing you for the money you're getting and for the crops you got here. And you want the preacher and the gospel and the Bible away. You want them to chill up. You want them gone. And you can't even thank God for the apples and the oranges and the grapes you're buying and the tomatoes. You know, all those that reject God and Jesus and the gospel at the farmer's market and heard me preach, they're going to stand. They'll have it, no excuse. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. You want food? Cut a piece of your own flesh off. Cannibalism. You're so hungry, you're going to eat yourself. When I was growing up as, as, a, as a child, there was an airplane crash somewhere up in a mountain. And they were taking the dead people and they were chopping them up and eating them so they could survive. But it says here, the flesh of his own arm. Not somebody else's, your own arm. You've got to be hungry. Manasseh, Ephraim, Ephraim and Manasseh, all in all, they together shall be against Judah. <laughs> they're brothers, they're kindred, they're going to be against you. As much as the Middle East is against Israel, so is your own family. Manasseh and Ephraim come from Joseph. Joseph helped and protected the children of Israel in the times of the seven years of famine. And his sons are going to be the enemies of Judah. For all this, his anger is not turned away. And his hand is stretched is stretched out. So you would think, enough, God. Nope, not enough. And yet Jesus says about the tribulation period, for the elect's sake, time will be changed. Time will be shortened. Well, I'm telling you, don't get God angry. If you get God angry, saved or lost, Israelite or church, you are in some serious trouble. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Our God's a consuming fire. <laughs> 